Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah. 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 And together we will go into the depth of the word of God. And I promise you your life will not remain the same. Before we begin, let's humble ourselves before the Lord. We take this moment to God in prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray. Precious Lord, we thank you for the time of the word. It's a time of life. It's a time of joy. It's a time of resurrection. It's a time of blessing. Spirit of the living God, amplify your word. Cause it to bear fruits in your hearers. Reveal Christ to us that we may walk in this light of the gospel mm -hmm. for we are not ashamed of this gospel yes. because it is the power of God unto salvation yes. Yes. to all who believe mm -hmm. thank you Lord Jesus yes. Amen so we will take our reading through. from the book of Romans chapter 4 from verse 9 to verse 17 let's read so we will does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only? All upon the uncircumcised also. For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it accounted? Why he was circumcised? Boyalinga komole dwa. Circumcised. Obanga tanda komole dwa. Not why circumcised. Sti boyalinga komole dwa. Why uncircumcised? Na yenga tanda komole dwa. And he received the sign of circumcision. Na wewe chokula virako e choku komole dwa. A seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had while still uncircumcised. A kabone roko butu kiri vovo kukiriza koyalina anga tanda komole dwa. That he may be the father of oh, all those who believe. Though they are uncircumcised. That righteousness may be imputed to them also. And the father of circumcision to those who not only are the circumcision. Eranga ye jaja waba komole so si wabu aba komolo bukomozi. But who also walk in the steps of the faith which our father had why still and circumcised. Na ye naba tambulida mubi gedebyo ku kidiza kwa jaja feibula emu kwe yalina anga tanna komole bwa. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham. Kubango kusubiza te kwa we raibula emu ne wankuba deza de. But through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void. And the promise of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath. Where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it may be according to grace, so that the promise may be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. 
Abraham. Who is the father of us all? As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him who believes, God gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though. Indeed. Thank you, Lord, for your word. As we begin today's Bible study, I want us to go back to where this all began. And that is in Romans chapter 1. To understand where Paul is coming from. And in his introduction, he points out something very important which is the foundation of what he is trying to bring about today. Here he states that he is set apart to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is that gospel then that he labors through the chapters and fails to us. And in the immediate context, he was writing to the church in Rome. And what he was laying down, the foundation of this gospel of Jesus Christ. And I told you the word gospel is the Greek word euangeliso, where we get the word good news. And is the good news. It means that the ungodly can be justified by a holy God. That the unrighteous, the sinners, can receive the righteousness that is by faith. And that is what Paul is laboring to bring to our attention today. That's through what God has provided, which is Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son. When we place our faith in him and his finished work, we are justified not based on what we do, not based on our background, not based on faith. And here he begins the journey by opening us up to the fact that outside of Jesus Christ, the entire human race is condemned. Those under the law and those out of the law all are condemned. All are guilty before God. And having unveiled this message of condemnation, he then proceeds from chapter 3, verse 21 to lay the cornerstone of how we can be justified by faith. And he gives us the understanding at what when we believe in Jesus Christ, God credits to our account the righteousness of his son Jesus Christ. And this we receive by faith. So he not only washes our sin, but he credits to us his righteousness. So that is an amazing 
account that we have. Uno bine byawandikwa birungi nnyo betulina. The ones guilty. Kati bali aba aliko musango. You have credited to your account. Kati kwa account wa ato yongeddeko. Righteousness of Christ. Obutukirivu bwa Kristo. And this is not something that you are for. Chino sigwa chikolere de. You receive. Chino receive. Owe bwa bokiriza faith in Jesus Christ. Bokiriza Kristo Yesu. So today's text. Yani kwa byolwa lero. So we get lost into this forest of words. Okay, tunaba ku tunabula mu bigambe binji I want to show you a pattern. Ngenda kula ge ensengeka ye bintu. That is emerging from the text that we just read. Egendo kuva mu byandi kwa byetwa kasoma. Let's put that in mind as we dig through the text. You're going to see four things that come through. He lists three negatives and one positive. And the three negatives is how you cannot receive the righteousness. Oh God. And then the positive is what you must do. So what do we see here? We see that through verse 1 to verse 8. He states categorically. That we cannot be justified by our good works. Then from verse 9, he says, I am not saying that we are good works. He emphatically states that we cannot be justified by any ceremony or sacrament. And then he brings out the ceremony that was at the top at that time which was circumcision. Nakula go mukolo gwakole bangedda gwe gwali ogokomola. And the third that we see through verse 13 to 15. Echo kusatu chola ba mulirwa 13 paka 15. We cannot be justified by keeping the law. Titosobola gobwa ko musango bwokuma amateeka. So having stated those three instances. Ngatoge de ko ebintu ebisatu. One how you cannot be justified by the law. Ejiso kante mpisa zo ne bikola bye birungi tebisobola kugobwa kugobwa ko kugobesa ko musango. Two how you cannot be justified by a ceremonial right. Echo kubiri inti Number three, how you cannot be justified by keeping the law. Five, Finally, he states how you are justified. And he brings in verse 16 to 17. That is the only way God has. It is the only way God has made available to us. We are justified by faith. So how does it all unfold? He begins from verse 1, from verse 1 through 8. Here he takes us back to so have an understanding of what this is all about. We saw that Abraham was justified by faith. Then he begins by saying, if Abraham was justified by works, then he has something to boss. And he says, if he was justified by works, he has something to boss. Abba in verse 4 of the same chapter, he says to him who works, the wages are not coming counted as grace but as a day. 
Aina cha galo kutegeza. Singe mili mojo je juku gobi je gobe sa koma sa. Chiba te chicha ali chikora cha chisa. Verse five. He says, but to him who does not work. Na yo yo atakola. And he is not talking about employment. Tagambi mili munga ba kukoze sa. No, he is talking about working to achieve salvation. Ategeza gokwe kolele ofno buloko zi. And he says, but to him who does not work. Ti oya takola. But believes on him who justifies the ungodly. Na ye na kilizo ya wogu tu kilivna gobo musango kubata tia katonda. His faith. O kukiriza koyo. Is accounted for righteousness. Kumu balidwa o kubo tu kilivu. I have previously stated. Mawegeyo na yogeda. That yes, we are actually justified by good works. But they are not our good works. They are works of another. Jesus Christ. So finished works of Jesus Christ on our behalf. And how did he do that? He was born under the law. And he lived a sinful life. Not a serious life. And having lived a sinful life, he achieves everything that is everything that needs to be achieved in the matter of fulfilling the law that was in place. Then, he bore our own sins on the cross. Our sin. And having come to that place. Bearing our sin. The righteous requirements of justice. Paid for in full. And then he purchased our redemption. And we did use several times to understand what redemption is all about. So when we talk about salvation, when we talk about justification, we bring nothing to the table except your faith. So Paul in another account in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 he paints it and says for by grace you have been saved through faith and that's not of yourself it is the gift of God not as a result of works lest any man should boast so we cannot boast about our salvation Whatever we have received, concerning all justification, it is by faith. The second thing he brings about is that it is not by our, it is not by ceremonies that we are justified. And how does he bring that up? Verse nine. Wait a minute. Does this blessedness then come upon us? Guri kufe circumcised only all upon the uncircumcised also. So what blessedness is he talking about? What blessing is he referring to? Remember he has gone back to so Abraham believed God and he credited to him for righteousness. And then in verse 7 
Jesus. She gives the account of the witness of David. Where David quotes and says, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. So when sins are forgiven, the state of blessedness comes. And he says, and whose sins are covered. In other words, God does not take into account their sins. So this sending the way of sin. Which is the Greek word afiemi. Does it only occur to the circumcised? Or to the uncircumcised also? That is the question Paul is asking. Paul Abuza. And so for you to interpret this, he says, Ayogera. for we say, Katituogera. and what is he trying to say? He is not alone. He said, this conclusion is not his individual thought. This adds every author of the Bible. Every prophet, every apostle says this is the unanimous decision. This is the conclusion. Faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. Look at what he's trying to say here. If you're not the word, the flow of the word, discover that he's transiterating what was written previously. He is saying here that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. Now, previously, it was stated that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. So, what is he trying to state here? He is trying to state the fact that the basis of Abraham's righteousness was his faith in Jesus Christ. So how was it accounted to him? When was this accounted to him? Was it accounted to him when he was uncircumcised? Or when he was circumcised? So basically what he's trying to say here that when was Abraham justified? Was he justified when he was circumcised? Or was he already Justified when he was yeah. Now, for us to understand this, we need to go back to the book of Genesis and look at the facts. So we will run this going backwards. And let's look at Genesis chapter 17, verse 23. This is what the Bible says. So Abraham, Abraham took Ishmael his son. All who were born in his house. All who were bought with his money. Every male among the men of Abraham's house. Circumcised the flesh of their four skins that very same day. As God had said to him. Verse 24. Abraham was 99 years old. When he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael. 
Ne is my twenty-five. His son was thirteen years old. When he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the very same day. Verse twenty-six. Abraham was circumcised and Ishmael his son. Ibrahim na komole bwa ne ismaili o mwana we. Look at what is happening. Wait a get easy. Abraham was circumcised when he was 99 years old. Ibrahim ya komole bwa kumpyenda mu mwenda. Now let's take it back. Tusoke today yo. Genesis 16. Verse 16. This is what the Bible says. Bible you get So Abraham, Ibrahim was 86 years old. Yari emiaka chinana mumukaga. Hagar bore Ishmael to him. Agari we azari na Ibrahim Ismaili. So when he was 86, bunga ine miaka chinana mukaga. Ishmael was born. Ismaili ko azari bwa. When he was 99. Boyaweza chenda mu mwenda. That is when he and Ishmael were circumcised. We rakolo yene Ismaili we ba ko molebwa. Let's go to chapter 15 verse 6. Tugende mu sura ya 15 onyirwa mukaga. Let's look at chapter 15 from the Bible says after this thing, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in the vision. Saying, Not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. And your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, What will you give me? Oh, no, but Seeing that I go child, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Then Abraham said, Look, You have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, this one shall not be your heir. One will come from your body. Shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside. And said, look now towards heaven. And count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, Mugamba. So shall your descendants be. Neza dedio bwedi di babwedi tio. Romukaga. And he believed the Lord. Nakiriza mukama. And he accounted to him for righteousness. Na kumubali la o kubovu tu kidivu. So when was Abraham justified? Di Ibrahim we are gobo ako musango. For God. Mumaso gakatonda. When was he saved? Ye di we are loko ka. He was justified. Ya gobo ako musango. Before he was circumcised. Ngatad neba na kukomo levoa. He was justified before Ishmael was born. He was circumcised when Ishmael <laughs> was 13 years. So what is the point we are trying to make here? Back to the text. Romans 4. Was he justified when he was circumcised or when he was uncircumcised? So the answer to this is that he was justified before circumcision. So it is not the circumcision that he was justified. Circumcision added zero. Standing with God. Circumcision adds zero in one standing before God. So yes, circumcision. Every sacrament you can think of. Baptism. 
Okubatiza. does not add anything. you standing with God. Baptism does not wash away your sins. Only the blood of Jesus. Only the blood of Jesus. Washes away sin. So when we believe. We took it then we are justified. So now you ask me, so what about circumcision? Who, verse 11, says, after being justified, we are no longer under a curse. So now we are no longer under a curse. So now we are no longer under a curse. So now we are no longer under a curse. So if you find a sign, come Kampala, 13 kilometers. And you go to that sign and hug it. And walk on this sign. Does that sign take you to Kampala? Uh, uh, on this side, do you get to Kampala? Yes. 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 Echipande siche chichiche chibruo. No komolewa. Pointing to Jesus Christ. Chali chipande chikusongeri eri Kristo Yesu. Yawe wo komolewa. As a sign. Ge chipande. And the seal of righteousness of the faith. Na kabone akobu tu kiri vovo kukiriza. Which he had obtained. We yauli yawe we da. Before he was circumcised. Ngatan naba kukomolewa. So this is the seal. Kati chino che che kabonero. Now when you meet a seal, if you meet a document and you see the seal, wofune chipapu chwandi kwa kulika akabonero. And then you're looking at the seal, admiring the seal. Bwenga we go mba kabonero kevan kevata deko. The seal is not the message. Akabonero sibwe bubaka. The seal is not the content. Akabonero ako sibche chevate geza. The seal simply gives is the official document or gives of officiality to this document. The seal is what authenticates what the contents of this document are. So when you see a container with a seal, the seal authenticates what is in the contents. So basically, the seal is nothing. What is important is what is inside. So even circumcision, no kukomolewa. It is a sign. Chipande. It is a seal. Eringa stamp. Like baptism. It is a sign. It is a seal. So it is that outward sign that points to an inward reality. So what he received, that's the sign. Pointed to what had happened to him inwardly. So in the same way, we receive water baptism. Pointing as to what has happened to us. Inwardly. When it comes to us being justified, we are justified. To fena to go wako musango. Righteousness may be credited to them. Bona bali okebongerwe ko butu kirivu. May be credited. Bali okebongerwe ko. It's like an account. 
account. An account of every believer in Jesus Christ. Is credited with God's righteousness. What does that mean? You are not in debt to God. You had a date which you could not. You had a date which you could not. Through your faith in Jesus Christ. Faith was faith. And this date was paid in full. Verse 12, he goes on to add. And the father of circumcision. To those who not only are of the circumcision. But who also walk in the steps. Of the faith which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. What is he trying to point out here? He's trying to tell us that Abraham, Abraham is not the father of Jews only for believe. But who also follow in the steps of faith. Our father Abraham. While he was still uncircumcised. So having understood this, what is the point we are trying to make? One that your good works will not justify you before. Secondly, we have established. There is no ceremony whatsoever. There is no sacrament whatsoever that makes you right with God. So the third part is what we see in verse 13. Paul adds, for the promise that he would be heir of the world was not to Abraham. All to his seed through the law. But through the righteousness of faith. So when he talks about the promise. What is he referring to? When he refers to the promise, he takes us all the way back to Genesis chapter 12. Verse 1 to 3. When the Lord comes to Abraham and says him, get out of your country from your family to your father's house the land that I will show you. And God makes the promises. He says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And ye shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And in you, the families of the earth shall be blessed. When he comes to Abraham, he makes the promise of a nation. He promises him a land. He promises him a blessing. And he promises that through him, all nations will be blessed. Now, this has two dimensions. Now, the first dimension, the physical land, is the physical nation. It's the physical blessing of the people of Israel. That is the first dimension. There is another dimension. Which is says, and he knew all the families of the earth shall be blessed. He is pointing to a Messiah. One who is pointing to a Messiah. 
His name is Jesus Christ. Now, for you to understand that, we then have to go to the book of Galatians. Chapter 3, verse 16. Sura ya kusatu. Bagalati ya sato kumi na mukaga. Says now to Abraham. And he said, Where the promises made. Beba we ebisu ebisu And he does not say unto seeds. Taga mbanti erie zadi. As of many. Ngatege zavanji. But as of one. Na ye ya erio omoyo. And to your seed. Ti erie omwa na wo. And Paul gives us the identity. Paulo natula go muntoyo. Who the seed is. Ti yali atege zachi. He said who is Christ. Ngaga mba ye Christo. So the promise. Kate chisu bizo. Kato onda che ya mua. Was to Abraham. Eri Ibrahim. And he said, "Ne omwana we." So the the second dimension that I talked about. Kate dalie yoku binevande njogera ko. That it was not just the promised land. Titecha koma kunsi ya subi zivua. There is the promise of salvation. Mwari mu nechi subi zochino choche chide tovu loko zi. And this was to come through his loins and this pointed to Jesus Christ. Ngachari chidja kufa muntu mwe zinga vategeza Yesu Kristo. And in verse 13, Ujiri wa kumi na satu, He says Christ has redeemed us. Ndi Kristo ye ya tununula. This seed that we talked about, Eza, e, O muntu ono kubo gira ko, Has redeemed us. Ye ya tununula. From the curse of the law. O kutuve mchikoli mo, mo, mocha amateka. Have become a curse for us. Kwe afuke chikoli mokulu wa fe. Oh, it is written. Kubanga chawa andikiwa. Curse is anyone who hangs on a tree. Buyon, akoli midwabuli ya wali kidwa kumuti. A fifth thing I want to point out. Kambe ko byen kulaga ko wano. First question you that is going through your mind. Kichibuzo chi ekisoka chi olina. What is the curse of the law? Ne chikoli mo chi chino chebategeze cha mateka. We talk about the curse of the law. We tuongera ku chikoli mo cha mateka. Talking about eternal condemnation. Tutegeza omusango gwe mirembe jonna. We are talking about eternal damnation. Tuogera ku kuzikirira mirembe jonna. We are talking about the second death. Tutegeza that we see in the book of the book of Revelation chapter 20. So Christ has redeemed us Christo from that eternal damnation. Why? Because he became a curse on our behalf. Kubanga yafuke chikoli mokulwa fe. He bore our sins in his body on the tree. Yatwale ebibibi afe mu mubiri gwebo yali ku muti. And in verse 14. Kumi nanya. Why would did this happen or what was the outcome? Biti ebya vamwecho. In verse 14 he says that the blessing of Abraham. Kumi nanya ati omukiso gwa Ibrahim. May it come upon the Gentile. Guliyoke gutukeri aba mawanga. In Christ Jesus, Mo Christo Yesu, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So what is happening? Now the Spirit of God becomes the seal. Yafuka. <laughs> Stampu. He becomes the sign to us. He becomes the testimony to us. We are now justified. Faith. You know what he says in Galatians 3.22? He says, but the scripture has confined all and the sin. In other words, it has when the scripture has put everybody and placed them under sin. That the promise by faith in Christ Jesus might be given to those who believe. And how does that happen? Then he says the Lord then comes in and says therefore the Lord 
amateka yali mukuza kipande kitutwale eri Kristo that we might be justified tuliyo ketugobwe ko musango oluo kukiriza kubanga mwena mufuse bana ba katonda bwe mukiriza Kristo Yesu abiri musavu kubanga mwe mwena aba abatizwa kuyingira mu Kristo mwaya ambala Kristo 28 comes there is neither Jew nor Greek Abiri obo mu Yonani tewali nto ono wa dembe obo muddu neither male nor female tewali musajjo ba mukazi mwena mulyo mu mu Kristo Yesu abiri mwenda if you are Christ era mwe we mubanga muri ba Kristo kati muri zadde ja Ibrahimu back to the seed adzeye ere zadde according to the promise era muri ba sikango kusubiza bwe kwali what is the point here cha 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 Kastoba ngoli na Kristo you know bidina if you don't have Christ boba Kristo to mulina you have nothing to dina ya de as far as being justified before a holy god butuba to ogena anto okugobwa ko musango masoga katondo mtu kuvu either jesus christ i know kubanga yesu kristo or not oba te dichidala so no ceremony and day. Omukolo tegujja kuyisawo okuba member wa kanisa sichi ekikutusayo nothing that you can do teri mu busobozi bwo ndije ekikuyisawo christ ye kristo faith in the person of jesus christ no kukiriza mu muntu ono yesu kristo and he's finished work alone ne milimujia tumaliriza ku rwafe joka but it's something that we have touched here wali wache twogedde ko wan we need to clarify it in romans chapter 4 era tuyino okuchitere okuchetegereza mu balume sura yo kuna verse 13 he says for the promise to abraham inti echa echisubize ri ibrahim and to his descendants neza dedie that he would be the heir of the world ndi ali ba musika wa season na here descendants is talking about abraham spiritual descendants wana zadde ategeza abana ba ibrahim mu muyo he held in the world okusikirensi yonna meaning he held in everything god had intended for his children kitegeza okusikira ebintu byonna katonda be yatondu kuwa abana be basically it's taking us back to the very beginning what wano tuba atuziza yeri mu luberebetye to fulfill his grand agenda atukirize enteka teka ye enkuru why he said let's make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion we buy again and to call omuntu mungeri ya fene mu kifana ncha fe era bafugenga so god now fulfills this oh kati katonda atu achitukiriza he had something that is important nae na chayongira ko chikuru you become heirs of the world nti mufuka basika ba season na not through the law sim ngamumaze kutukiriza mateka meaning that you you cannot keep the law perfect in other words the law cannot get you there na ku amateka tusobola ga ku mugama leo sige ga sobola kuyisawo he says but Nagama na ye through the righteousness of faith wabula mu butukirivu obwo kukiriza so it is faith kukiriza kuka gets you to this point kwe kukutusa wo and he adds in verse 14 ayongera mu 10 nya so if those who are of the law kubanga abo mu mateka those those who are trying to attain righteousness by the law bali abatu yano kutfuna obutukirivu mu kutukiriza mateka he says for if those who are of the law are heirs kubanga abo mu mateka singa be basika then faith kata okukiriza is void kuba ku dibiye basically what he's trying to say cha kutegeza okukiriza and the law abogatta kama teka 
are incompatible. So they cannot be drawn together. You cannot have faith in Christ. And you keep him below at the same time. These two are mutually exclusive. One renders the other void. So if you are of the Lord, and you try to use the Lord, the yeah. air. If you attain it, then faith is void. Why? Because the law brings wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. So the law brings to the fore the fact that you are a transgressor. I give you an example. Here in Uganda, Mu Uganda, people drive on the left side. So if there is why do they drive on the left side? Because that is what the law states. So if you drive on the right side, you are driving, yes. But you are breaking the law. So why are you why is there a transgression now? Because there is a law. So in the same way, this law brings about the wrath of God. And so God has brought this law in place to show us our violations. So before God, we cannot attain right standing. We understood one by our good works. Two, we cannot attain right standing with God. Number three, we cannot attain right standing with God by keeping the law. So, you can't be a good person. So and, and justifies you. So in verse 16, then brings the positive. And it says, therefore, it is of faith that it may be according to grace. So we see now two elements coming. Faith, and the rest. Why? It says so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not only those who are of the law. But also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. Who is the father of us all. So he says for, by, for, for this reason it is by faith. In other words there is no other. He doesn't say for this reason it is of faith and that therefore it is of faith and what? He doesn't say therefore it is of faith and ceremony. No, he doesn't say it is of faith and the law. It is of faith and the law. And faith alone that it may be according to Christ. So that is what then emphasizes what we saw in Ephesians 2. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Why? Say so that the promise. 
referring to salvation in Christ Jesus which is the promise made to Abraham that through him his seed all nations will be blessed be sure that you are to all the seed, in other words, guaranteed. Chidioke chinyue zewe elie zaddi yona. This salvation that is by faith. Ngabwe bolo kozi obuwe wabantu ngabakidi za. So there is only one way. Ekubo tu inali muli oka. There is only one means. Ekubo tu inali muli oka. It is through faith. And once it up and says, as it is written, I make you a father of many. In the presence of his people, in the presence of him whom he believes, God who gives life to the dead, and calls those things that are not, those things that do not exist as though they be. What is he trying to say? is putting a point here. It is a message to everyone. Here he calls God. He gives us the example of Abraham. How he was justified. God made a promise to him as a father of men. He says he believed this God who gives life to the dead. In the immediate context, this referred to Abraham and Sarah. When you read the book of Hebrews, and how they believed God and through faith they were able to conceive Isaac. So from a dead womb, he was able to conceive Isaac. So from a dead womb, he was able to conceive Isaac. When they believed God, life came through. But that is the physical level. There is the spiritual dimension. That applies to everyone who believes in Jesus Christ. See, when we are spiritually dead in our sins, we cannot believe. So it is God who gives life to you who is dead and calls that faith that does not exist. So he calls forth that faith. It is that faith in Christ Jesus which was not initially there but then now rises. And you, the dead sinner, you now believe the living Savior. And he's finished work. And you become justified by faith and faith alone. So what is the message to us? Number one, it is through faith and faith alone. Number two, it is not too late. It is not too late. Abraham Ibrahim, at an advanced age believed God and he received the righteousness. Even today you can receive this righteousness that comes to us by faith. Number three, it doesn't matter what your history is. Abraham was an idolater. When he believed God, God credited to him righteousness through faith. Even today, you can receive this righteousness by faith. Why don't you say this prayer? It's our God of heaven. Thank you. Because why am I still yet a sinner? Jesus Christ. Okay. Yes, Christo Boyadja. Die in my place.
Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Ralero. Kwani liza mbula mbu wange. Nga gwe mloko zi wange. Gwe mkama wange. Zijuza no moyo. Nunga miyanku lembe da. Mungeri esi nga yo. Okutambula mbula mbu no. Edi echi tiwa. Netende edi edi nyali o. Tange webali. Mulinye edi ayesu. Bobo zemwe sale yo. You have received the righteousness of God. The reason the number on the screen. Number is on the screen. Yo, you come Somebody will receive it. What we again do? Give you the first instructions. Ah, we be so kerua ko mukukiri zakono. I'm from Dominion Church. Okuva mukani sa Dominion. It's been a pleasure having you today. Shiva decha muendo. Okuva na wele. Please join me again next week. Tuko sabano ludako tuwe gateko. And God richly bless you. Mukama kuwa mukisa. Shalom. Emirembe jibena au.